All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another breakdown. We got passage number three. This is a BB passage. All right, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to get them all right, just like that, all right, in the least amount of time possible. I'm going to show you guys how to get that timing down and how to make these details actually make sense, actually make sense, okay? So, as always, guys, do the passage on your own first, answer the questions on your own first, and then hear me break it down. So I'm going to scroll down here. This is our passage. Okay, this is our first question, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. All right, so we got a lot of questions here. Good practice, a lot of good practice. All right, here we go. We're going to break it down right now. The pentose phosphate pathway produces ribose 5-phosphate from glucose 6-phosphate and generates NADPH, which is used by the cell in biosynthetic pathways such as fatty acid synthesis as a reducing agent. Okay, not going to highlight anything here. I already know this from content review. It's pretty simple. Ribose 5-phosphate is converted to 5-phosphoribosyl 1-pyrophosphate by the enzyme ribose phosphate pyrophosphokinase all right so this did not know so ribose 5 phosphate is converted to prpp by ribose phosphate pyrophosphokinase all right prpp is an essential precursor in the biosynthesis of all nucleotides so prpp all nucleotides all of them. Ribose phosphate pyrophosphokinase is inhibited by ADP and GDP nucleotides. Okay, they have the pathway here. Is this the whole pathway? It might be. Let's keep going. The committed step in purine nucleotide synthesis is catalyzed by the enzyme amidophosphoribosyl transferase, which uses glutamine and PRPP as substrates. This enzyme is inhibited by AMP and GMP and is activated by high concentrations of PRPP. So it's inhibited by AMP and GMP. An intermediate and purine biosynthesis is inosine monophosphate. I knew this from my class. The conversion of IMP to AMP is inhibited by AMP and the conversion of IMP to GMP is inhibited by GMP. So we got some negative feedback here from uh, AMP and GMP here, okay? An essential precursor in pyrimidine biosynthesis is carbamyl phosphate, which is generated by the enzyme carbamyl phosphate synth synthase. All right, that's pretty self-explanatory. This enzyme is inhibited by UTP and activated by ATP and PRPP. The production of CTP from UTP is inhibited by CTP. Okay, these reactions are summarized in figure one. All right, <laughs> thank you for summarizing all of these in this figure. That helps a lot. <laughs> okay, synthesis of which of the following are subject to end product inhibition? So which ones go and inhibit a product you know, earlier in the pathway? That's what they're asking. Okay, which one inhibits? AMP, GMP, and CTP. Okay, AMP definitely does. I remember here. So AMP and GMP, they definitely do. So it's not D. All right. CTP. The CDP? Yeah, right here. The production of CTP from UTP is inhibited by CTP. Okay, so AMG, GMP, and CTP. All right, so let's see, this one or this one does UTP inhibit. Yeah, UTP inhibits the carbon phosphate, right? So yeah, this enzyme is inhibited by UTP. UTP inhibits carbamyl phosphate synthase. So, yeah, that's it. Process elimination, we're going with B here. All right. Which of the following are products of the pentose phosphate pathway? NADPH is, okay. Glycotic intermediates, yes. Okay, the pentose phosphate pathway, it feeds back into glycolysis, you know, like glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Um, ribose 5-phosphate, that's the whole point of the PPP. Okay, all of these are products. 
the presence of high concentrations of ATP stimulates production of what? Honestly, ATP stimulates a lot of production of a lot of things. Um, ribose 5-phosphate? No. No, because that's in the pentose phosphate pathway. There's no ATP used in the pentose phosphate pathway. Pyrimidines? Yeah, ATP will stimulate those. Okay. I'm pretty sure it tells us as well here. Let me see. Well, when you think about it, ATP makes the ribose 5-phosphate. And we need that for pyrimidines and purines, all that stuff. Let's check the let's check the figure. Okay, when you're unsure, you can check the figure. That's fine. So ATP this is going to stimulate production of pyro this one, 5 phosphoribosol one pyrophosphate. And this is going to make your intermediate ones, intermediate twos. Yeah, that's going to make your pyrimidines and your purines, okay? So both pyrimidines and purines, yeah. Okay, 15 is D. We just got to look at the figure for that one. The reaction of glucose 6-phosphate to ribulose 5-phosphate is an oxidation of G6P. Okay, I'm pretty sure they tell us that as well. I knew this, but they tell us that right here. All right, if we're generating NADPH, we're reducing NADP+. Plus and we're oxidizing the glucose 6-phosphate, so oxidation of glucose 6-phosphate. Which of the following is likely true of the pentose phosphate pathway? It is more active in adipose than in muscle. Yeah, okay, it's very active in adipose, okay? The pentose phosphate pathway, it generates the NADPH, and that NADPH can become oxidized to NADP+, and while NADPH gets oxidized, a fatty acid can get reduced, and we can make fatty acids in adipose tissue. A is correct. NADPH is produced and can be used in the electron transfer chain. No, it cannot. Only NADH and FADH2. Is it a series of isomerizations? No, there's oxidation. We just mentioned that glucose 6-phosphate gets oxidized. Okay. The inhibition of carbonyl phosphate synthase by purine nucleosides helps to regulate the production of UTP and CTP. CPS Carbon phosphate synthase gets inhibited by UTP, and UTP is not a purine. UTP is a pyrimidine. The pyrimidines are T, C, and U. So this is wrong. Therefore, the answer is A. It can be inferred from the passage that TTP is made from, well, again, TTP is thymine. Thymine is a T, C, U, is a pyrimidine. And if we're making pyrimidines, Okay, we're going to go through, um, I believe, this pathway here. All pyrimidines are made from carbonyl phosphate synthase. So we're going to go from like here to here. Okay, so we're going to need glutamine. We're going to need carbonyl phosphate synthase and carbonyl phosphate. Okay, we're going to need intermediate two, not intermediate one. Therefore, the answer is one, two, and four, which is D. All right, that's pretty much it, guys. That's how we do it. I'm really confident in these answers. I don't even think I have to check these, okay? That's how you do it. Very simple. Just like that. You got five right. I'll see you guys in the next video. Join MCAT University.